Your this conference will now be recorded. Yeah, yeah, it's mine, I'm sure. Just a second, I'm, I'm going to go on mute momentarily. Okay. okay. Only momentarily, Uzi. Okay. So, um, Perich Hamishi, right, Chela Gimel, uh, Perich Hamishi, is Behevdel Kol Hanaviyim. We've been discussing prophecy, and now we need to know the difference between all of the Nevi'im, beginning to end, Mi Moshe Rabbeinu Alav HaShalom. From Moshe, who was in a complete different category, Lo Kam Yisrael Kamoshe Navi O. There will never again be a prophet like Moshe. Moshe was the quintessential, and we're going to see how uh, in terms of the in terms of the quality, the essence of his navu of his prophecy, it was on a whole different level of connection to Hashem than anyone else ever did or ever will have. So let us begin. Aleph. So these levels of prophecy in general, we could break it up into two categories. Ha number one. Madre Gott, call the Nevi'im Chusim Moshe Ben Olav Hashalom, the level of all the Nevi'im besides Moshe. Vashniya, and the second one is Madre Gott, Moshe Ben Olav Hashalom, the Madre Gott, the level of Moshe of blessed memory upon him. Peace be upon him. Ba'kadosh Baruch Hu Ba'atzmel Chilkam. And if you want to know where we see this difference, Hashem Himself presented this Chiluk. This differentiation. Bechilukze u be'er hevdeilam, and God explained the qualitative difference that exists between Moshe on one hand and everyone else. Kakatuv, as it's written, im yen v'yachem Hashem, if it will be the, uh, amongst the prophets of Hashem, b'mara elav hit vada, b'mara. In a vision, a love to that individual, et vada, God says, I will make myself known. It is through a vision, lo chain avdi Moshe. And that is not the case when it comes to my servant Moshe. Okay? And I have a bracket over here, which is not a, which is not a translation which says the necessity for this vast difference, because it was the Torah itself, excuse me, it was the Torah itself that was revealed through Moshe's prophecy. I think I blew Uzi right off, right, right off the call. Wow. I know I've got a bad sneeze, but I didn't realize it had such a power. Right? The Torah itself was revealed through Moshe's prophecy. Okay? And therefore, the level of Moshe, the qualitative level of Moshe, had to be completely different. Let's see. Bet. Now we're going to explain. Klal kol That group of all anavim, chutz bi Moshe, except for Moshe, nevuatam al yidei mara vechalom. Their prophecy would be through a vision or a dream, as it says, Bimara a love et vada, right? Through a vision to him, God says, et vada, I will make myself known. Bahalom, through a dream, adaber bo, I will speak to him. Vahainu, meaning, Shakurish Baruchu, Mishamesh minachalom hechakukvar bitivam shabane adam. God will utilize, we naturally dream. Every single one of us, to the best of my knowledge, we are not Nevi'im, or not prophets, yet we all dream. So part of the natural processes of a human being is to dream. So God will utilize that aspect of the human function, human processes, God will use that which is a natural process of human beings, to use that as a means, 
to transmit through that natural process that we call a dream, he will utilize that as a way of extending a prophecy to a Navi. And right away he says, don't make the mistake to think, oh, so Navua is like a dream. We have dreams and sometimes they might be revealing to us the future. Oh, so no, no, no. Not to say that a nevua, a prophecy, and a chalom or a dream are mimin echad, one category. Rather, a dream is something that Hashem said would be a good vehicle, a good means to bring to prophecy. And I'll explain further. Below Amru Chachamenu Zachar, and the Chazal did not say, Chalom Echa Mishishim Menavua, that that the sages said that dreams are one sixtieth of Nevua. They only said that, Ele Mitzad Hayotbo Hagada Vahoda'a. Only that they are both manners. Uzi, I think you have to mute. Others. We're getting bounced back until you want to talk. Okay. They're both manners of, of imparting knowledge to a person above the normal manner that that is done according to my own seichel. As we mentioned above, right? He, just, he discussed bre- dreams above, not in the context of Navua. <laughs> Excuse me. He described, he described, remember, he explained, he described dreams before that when the Nishama leaves it, and when we sleep, it is able to communicate with other spiritual forces whom are not, which are not bound by time. And therefore, it could sometimes gain information from them that upon our awakening, it comes back into our consciousness. And that is a way of obtaining knowledge beyond our usual using our seichel. We read books, we listen to lectures, we introspect, we contemplate. Those are the normal ways that we gain information. A dream is a way beyond that of gaining information. And a navua, completely different than a dream, but a navua is also a way of gaining information beyond our usual manners and our usual faculties. That's all the sages meant when they said that dreams are one sixtieth of prophecy. They both are means of obtaining knowledge beyond our usual faculties and the way that we normally gain knowledge but in that so in that case so what is this dream nevua point comparison that he mentioned let's see gimel let's see three dna bitgaber shefa nevua alanavi when this influence of the nevua the prophecy overcomes takes over this navi he becomes, he goes beyond his normal feelings, and he goes into this loss of consciousness, this sleep-like state. And his thoughts or like the thoughts of a person who is sleeping, the cholim dreaming, the az timasheich loha nevua, and then the nevua will come. So on the outside, it might appear as if this person has gone into this limbo, unconscious state. The amnam evsher sheyagia nevarzel anavi beedit sikato. This can come to a navi while the navi is awake. And suddenly he goes into this losing of his faculties, physical, mental faculties, goes into this trance, goes into this unconscious state. No, not uh, not when he's awake, when he wakes up. Second, one sentence. 
And it's possible that when the person is lying down on his bed, the chalom al of the normal dreams at night, then the dream, then the normal dream state stops and he enters into a very, very clearly different state of Timashech Lo Hanavua. Or the Navua will come to him. Yes, Uzi, sorry. No, I was going to say it's not when he's awake, it's when he's waking up, he's going to realize what he has been dreaming and, and all the prophecy no, that he received. No, in I don't him. think so, Uzi. I think he's saying this prophetic state could come to a person when they're awake and they'll suddenly go into this unconscious state and have this nevua, or it could be while they are laying asleep in their normal dream like. And this Navua will come and will interrupt that normal dreamlike state, and they will have their and they will have their Navua. Well, be... sorry, so please. I was just going to say, Yekitsato is he's waking up. Is that's how I understand that word? Yekitsato, he's waking up, not when he's yeah. awake. But I don't think that's the case over here. That's fine. Okay. It, yeah, I think it's while he is awake or while he is asleep. Amnam al kol panim lo tikiyeo nevua ela achar heyoto chut michushav. Whatever the state the person was when he entered this state of nevua, nevua will only come when the person is chut michushav beyond his own senses, out of out of out, out of conscious commission unconscious and the person becomes immersed tardema in that in that deep slumber like state this could be very very short lived a very very short time the take and the person can then immediately return back to his previous state, whatever that might have been, awake or asleep. But during the time of that nevuah, the person loses control of his senses. And he goes into this trance-like, deep sleep-like state for that period of time until the prophecy is is obtained but that's how it is for everyone else sorry robin how about when um god talked to was it samuel that wasn't in a dream right he was awake correct. or he heard his name correct correct so is that like but they talked to moses like that right yes so again a regular navi we haven't yet gone to the complete difference yet Right now we're saying a regular Navi can happen while he is awake, as happened with Shmuel and Navi, that first prophecy that he heard his name being called. He thought it was Eli the Kohen Gadol calling him. Twice he went to Eli the Kohen Gadol. By the second time, Eli said, realized he's having a Navua and told him, this is what you should do. That's a case where he was awake. Or it can be when a person is asleep, but either way, whatever my my starting state is when right. that nevua comes i'm 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 ice mensch i'm gone I, i'm no longer in control i'm in this unconscious trance like deep sleep sort of state okay valid four amnam re'iyatam shalom that which the Navi sees in his prophecy, in his prophetic vision, it's not the way that I see any of you or anything before me. Rather, it's like one who sees through an aspaklaria, translated here like a lens. And not just through a single lens. 
El kemishro emitoch aspak lariot rabot. A lens and a lens and a lens and a lens. Shenetak behenat siyor mizo lezo. Right? Where this image is refracted or reflected from one to the other, to the other, to the other. Achanir ehu echad vadai. Utnuatav niramitach aspak lariot. What the person sees is what the person sees, but it's not, but it's it's one vision, but it is through these different lenses, these different refractions, reflections, these different filters, all of that is a little bit blurring. All of that is a bit distancing. But what I see, I see. That's clear even though it's through these different reflections. Below Od, Ela she'en riyatam el kemish ro mitoch aspaklaria bilti mutzuch tzachat. We see through, it's not, it's through a non-clear lens. Right, you know, when you look through, sometimes you look through, we have those um, windows that are, what's it called, clouded windows, there's a certain term for it, I forget what it is, right? Or, the, or there's condensation, so it's foggy. So we have that. We can't see each of the aspects, each of the outlines in absolute clarity. So too, we are not able to see the kavod, the glory with the capital G. This presentation of God will soon explain it's not God that we're seeing it's that which God is creating for us to see in order to represent and allow us to understand an aspect of Kavodo of his glory but even that we can't see that directly even after we have this refraction, 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 refraction. We, even after that, we can't see it with Even though that which we see, that is this glory of God. And again, he'll, he'll clarify soon. It's not that God has any shape or form, but that which God is creating to show this Navi as a representation of his glory. And this is a point that we kept repeating earlier. When it comes to a person who's a true Navi, not those who are in training, but one who is a true Navi, there is no safek, there is no doubt whatsoever that this is a Navua whether the person was awake and went into this trance-like state, or the person was asleep, and the sleep was interrupted with this trance-like state of Navua, there's absolute clarity between my thoughts as I'm awake and my thoughts when I'm in this state of Navua, my dreams or thoughts when I'm asleep, and this Navua, this prophecy that I had while I was asleep. There are many levels and differences between one Navi and another. One might have a cleaner lens, a less cloudy lens than his than, than the other. And therefore they understand in a clearer fashion. But the Navi who is understanding this prophecy on whatever level of clarity they are seeing it, that message, that inyan, that the, the concept the person gets with absolute clarity. It is perfectly clear to the person. The one who is revealing himself, the one who is imparting this knowledge, making known to him who is 
the Creator. Blessed is His name. There's no doubt whatsoever. Umasig inyan ha and he understands this idea of the aspaklaya of the lenses, mitsiuto, this so do, its existence, its essence, and its mysteries, umasig umaskil askalot hanishvaotlo, and the person attains and understands that information, that haskala that is being imparted to him. The emet uvebeirur with absolute clarity, as we mentioned above in Perak Shalishi. The amnam, kumoshit vadak of any love, who al yidei kol heteke hatsiur haela, kain haidi dotamagietlo, heim al yidei chidotamishalim. The same way that the image comes through these lens to lens to lens, so too the information is also coming to him. Al yidei chidot, who mishalim, allegories, mashal is a parable. Me shall, right? Me shall. From that, we're borrowing from that and bring it over to us. And it comes through this dream. And, right, the, 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 which is this vehicle of prophecy that we mentioned before. So that is everyone else. Ach. But the prophecy of Moshe, he bederich yoter elyon mi kolzer, comes about in a manner that is far above all of this. Larishona, firstly, he did not need to lose control of his senses to go into this trance like state and not a dream like state. Rather, the Nebuah would come to him while he was still in his normal, conscious state. The Zer Shunema, as the Postic says, Pe el pe adaber bo. Mouth to mouth, I will speak to him. All of these psukim are all coming from Bamidbar when Aaron and Aaron and Miriam spoke about Moshe, and Hashem said, why were you not afraid to speak about my servant Moshe? It's all of you here in the end of Baaloscha, right? If you're, if you're in a vision, that's how I speak, loking up the Moshe, the whole Beiti Nemanhu, Peh al Peh, we're co- right, the psukim that we're going out to show the differences are taking the psukim, the words that Hashem used when he spoke to Aaron and Miriam and said, you think you're like Moshe, that you could speak about Moshe? And then he delineates the differences. Pe al pe adaberbo, mouth to mouth, I will speak to him, right? Not with him losing his senses. And Moshe would see it through, so to speak, a single lens. A very clean, sparkling, polished lens. Right? That's what's called Ispaklaria. The Ira is the term that is used. A, 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 a lightened up lens. And the knowledge would come to him in a very clear way. Lo al yidei chidot, not through different riddles and parables, as it says, umar e velo bechidot, with a vision, and not through these chidot, and not through these riddles. Ulam, however, gam lo yakavod mitgale kapi masha efshelo lekabel. And God's glory, again, was revealed to him according to that which he could receive. And as God would appear within this vision. No human being, even Moshe, can see directly 
can understand and can see directly any vision of God. But this vision that was presented, that Moshe could see Biveror. Kamisha, or like a person who looks through us, through this illuminated, polished lens, that there is nothing holding him back. Fascinating. The tmuna, the picture of God that he can gaze at. Right, that picture he's able to see clearly, clearly. Which is not the case with the other Nevi'im. But nevertheless, the bottom line, what is it? It is a tmuna. It is a tziyur. It is a representation of God, as opposed to God, because there is no image of God. The other Nevi'im, even that siyur, they cannot see clearly. Through this vision that Moshe would see, he would have this understanding, this information, great and clear to a great degree. More than any of the other Nevi'im, the other prophets. The old Hevdel, and another difference. Hayah ben Sharnavi in Moshe between the other prophets and Moshe. She Sharnavi lo yav v'yadam li nave v'kol sha'ah. It was not on demand, right? We live in a world where we expect everything to be on demand. They were not able to have their prophecy v'kol sha'ah at any time. Ela v'shah she yabori barach shmo rotze. When God would so decide, that is when. Hashem would appear to them. At such a time, He would rest His influence upon them, umit nabim, and they would have their prophecy. Whereas by Moshe, it was dependent upon His will, right? The daughters of Tzlavchad came to Him, and He said to them, Emda, let's stand, the Eshma'a, and let us hear what Hashem will have to say. They came to him about receiving a portion in the land. And the Pusik says, Vayakrev Moshe Mishpatan Lifnei Hashem. Moshe brought their case, their judgment, their issue before God. Moshe was able to initiate it. That others were not allowed to do. What about uh, Rivka? And it's just interesting. In in modern Hebrew, lit kasher means to to contact, to call. Right? Tit kasher Eli, give me a call. Moshe had the ability lit kasher bo, right? To connect to God, to reach out to God, to connect to God. Kasher, ulam shich elav, and to thereby bring, initiate, and bring upon himself hagiloi this revelation kafi hatzorech. Yes, according to what he needed. Yes, I was. I was going to say um, that Rivka herself also went to God to consult with him. She went, according to the sages, according to Rashi, brings the Medrash. Rivka vayisrotesu avanim bekirba. Tomin kain lamaz anochi vatelech lidrosh et Hashem. Rashi brings the Medrash. What did she do? She went to the Beit Medrash of Shem and Aver, the son and the great grandson of Noach. That was where she would find out a message from Hashem. It wasn't a, it wasn't a direct. That's how the sages, no, that's but, how Rashi brings the Medrash over there. But he uh, responded he directly to reading, her. The simple reading is like you're saying, right? Because the post says, Vayomer la Hashem. Uh-huh. Vayomer Hashem la. But Rashi there says, Al yidei shiach, shliach, right? Mm-hmm. ne'emar. Right? Well, actually, it says, Vatelech lidrosh et Hashem. She went to seek out. It doesn't say she spoke to God. She went to seek out Hashem. Rashi says, Lebeit Medrasho Shel Shem. Right? And Vayom Hashem La Al Yidei Shliach. 
l'shem ne'ema b'ruach hakodesh v'hu amar la. Interesting. But the lidrosh is also means Torah, to demand. I'm sorry. Lidrosh also means to demand, and I assume she wanted to demand an answer of what's going on in her belly. Yeah, there might be others that learn like that. That's not how Rashi is learning. Be We're going to have the, to... The, the Gemara Megillah speaks about the Shiva Niviot, the seven prophetesses. And one of them, I believe, might have to look it up afterwards, might be Rivka, and the Gemara might say from this, right? Hashem, right? She had the Nevua of, of Shnei Goyim Venech, Shnei Lumin, Right, the two nations will come for you. La Omi, La Omi, Emats, Ravi Avod Sa'ir. Interesting, interesting. No, well, I just thought I will, I will ask, but yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm not, there's no issue. Yeah, e, right. Even if we are going to learn like that, if there are, if that's what the Gemara is saying, there are that learn like that. But Moshe was right. I can call whoever I want. I don't always get through. Right. Right. Moshe right. was able to call and get through it could be that was a time that rivka called and got through but it's not that she as a nevia had the ability to always to always get through yep but oh and furthermore shishar nevim lo yama sigim elinim pratiim other nevim would only understand some particular aspect that which god wanted to reveal to them Moshe merited Shigalulo Kol Sidre Habria. It was real to him all of the aspects of creation. Benitin Lo Rishut Lach Korata Kol, Lachapes Bakal. He had the ability to delve into everything, to search everything, right? Whatever he wanted to find out, it would be made available to him. Benimstru Viado Kolam Aftachot. All the keys, so to speak. We're given over to him, Shalom Nimsru Lamayolam, that which was never given over to any other human being. Bahumashan Amar Kosov to the Pasik says, Bechol Beiti Neeman Hu. This is all over there by the this is all over there by Hashem speaking to Aaron and Miriam about how Moshe is on a different level. Bechol Beiti throughout my entire house, so to speak, God says, Neeman Hu. He is trusted. He can go from room to room. He could open up any of the cabinets, open up any of the drawers that he wants. He's got full reign there. The Chay Neman also, it says, by Ani Avir, after the Chay Ta'egel, after the Sin of the Golden Calf. So Moshe was asking for these different levels. And Hashem said, Ani Avir, call to the Alpanaka. I will make pass all of my good before you. Call to the all aspects. Yep. kulam, all the other prophets. Kamoshiyum asigim hatsiyur shem istayer lehem in a kavod. Kamosh zacharnu. Vayum asigim soda tsiyur v'inyano. The prophets we get that clear vision of Hashem's kavod and the sod. And Siyor, they would understand the secrets, the form or of that. Perish sod he matzei zeha inyan, chaya kavod mitzdayer. They would understand the secrets of this matter, how the kavod, how God's glory was appearing. The ech nimshach mize, what what resulted from that? Uma kavana bechose, and what was the intent, the message? That was contained there for them. And they would understand this wisdom, this, this, this enlightenment in secrets about the greatness of God through that idea, through that presentation, that tmuna, that picture, that form. With all that, they had this absolute clarity about the truth. <laughs> that God himself has no shape, has no form, has no picture. <laughs> Rather, this tzior 
is something that was created, formed. For the eyes of that prophet, Kirtsono, according to God's will, Allah Tama Yadu at slow, according to the reasoning that God understands. So they understood fully that with all that they understood that this was God's glory representation and the message and how it came about and what resulted. But at the same time, they had that clear understanding. This is not God. This is not God. This is what God has created in order to present this knowledge to me. But there was never this clouding that this is God, right? And we, we know from idolatry that there was this tremendous want to have something tangible. And I would say Christianity to a degree also needed to have something tangible. So instead of God, man striving to become in the image of God, they turned God into the image of man and said God became a person. But it's all this same want to have something tangible to connect to, to wrap our hands around. But the Nevi'im, with all of their understandings, had absolute clarity that this is just a creation that God made in order to facilitate their understanding. But this is not God. The Al Davarzen Nemar Li Yisrael, about this it was said to Yisrael, Right? You saw no image, only a voice. Right? You did not see any picture. Right? They were these two aspects that they understood, these two truths that were perfectly clear. God has no form, no shape, no picture. He is beyond any such visualization. And only after that clear understanding, only with that understanding on that foundation, could it be revealed to them a picture of these prophetic visions? Shalal never that about that, about that vision it said by Sinai, Vayiru eight Eloke Yisrael. They saw the God of Israel. Once it was perfectly clear that they're not seeing the God of Israel, then they could be shown a tmuna, a picture with its representation. That's what the sages referred to. It was a visualization. A vision of Dibur. It's not a vision of, the, of God himself. But it is a vision of that comes about from this dibor, from this speech, like that we said before, like the lens. It's fascinating. By 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 Mamet Har Sinai, by Mount Sinai, right? They saw the kolot. The sound. The sound. As we mentioned above, Sha'al Yado, that through it, Masigim, they were able to attain, understand, fathom, prate inyanim, specific ideas, bisodot, in the secrets of Elokuto, of the godliness, of God's divinity, Barach, Ubriato, and the creation of this world, Bahan Hagato, and that which plagues all of us. Han Hagato, how Hashem guides this world, how he runs this world, right? Famously, conducts. When Moshe said to Hashem, when I go to an Israel, what name should I say? And God said, Hey, yeah, I share, hey, yeah. Which there are many, many explanations. I love Rabbi Sachs's explanation. 
I will be that which I will be, meaning you will not be able to predict me. You are going to think you can. You're going to say, there's no way God will allow A, B, or C, or God is certainly going to do X, Y, Z. And you might get it right sometimes, and many times you're going to get it wrong. Even Moshe, when he said, Hareini nad klodecha, show me your glory, the Gemara explains, he was saying, explain to me, Sadiq viralo, a righteous person who suffers, Russia vitovlo, an evil person, and everything is just going swimmingly for that person. That is hanhagato, how God runs this world. And we're not God, and therefore we do not understand it. But every prophecy was a revelation of sorts about sodot elukuto yidbarach, secrets of God's divinity, briato, the creation that he made, this world, van hagato, and how God guides and runs this world. There were those that were revealed. I'm learning through Yeshayahu now, right? And we hear Hashem reveals to Shio, this will happen, that will happen. This is how I'm going to guide it. This is how I'm going to steer it. But um, but there's much that is left for us to, to try to wrap our heads around, but to have that humility, I like to say, to recognize that we are not going to fathom God and his ways. Shakur. Yashikach, my friends. So, Bezat Hashem, in two weeks' time, we will jump to Chelek Dalit, the last Chelek, which is Chelke Avodah, areas of divine service. How all of this then plugs into what we do day in and day out in serving Hashem. That's when we bring it Very home good. to a certain degree. Safe Yashikach, travels, everybody. Rabbi. Say bye, bye, bye. 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 Be well, everybody. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.